Montana won the toss and deferred. And Andre Weathers watches this one roll into the end zone. Revere on the pitch. It's bobbled, but Myers has it. To the 40, Mark Myers. To the 25, Myers to the 20. He's 10. He's dragged down at the seven yard line by Calvin Coleman. My goodness. And it's first and goal. Straight ahead is Adrian Peterson. Did he bobble the ball? Montana felt they had it. The officials say he was down. Revere is stopped at the one yard line. Again, the ball came loose, Rod Gilmore. And again, the officials say it was, a, it was down on contact. Georgia Southern. Straight ahead. And again, the ball is loose. Montana says they have it. It's in the end zone. If Georgia Southern's got it, it's a touchdown. If Montana has it, it's a touchback. Oh, Rich, I thought they were trying to get it to Adrian Peterson on the option. And you, when you do the option, you put the full the, the football into the fullback stomach and you wait to read contact before taking it out. Touchdown, Georgia Southern, and Montana is livid. Here's a look. Ball loose. Rod yeah, Gilmore, yeah, that, that never made it over the end zone. Now the question is, was it recovered by Georgia Southern? Well, the ball was clearly on the ground. They had to rule that it was recovered by a Georgia Southern player. Now flags go down as Montana scrambling around for the extra point. And again, Rich, when you talk about the option, again, the quarterback has to stick the ball into the fullback, and in this case, Peterson's stomach, and then pull it out if he doesn't want him to have it. Good snap. Delay. Illegal substitution. 12 players on the field against the defense in the distance. Keep your eye on Peterson number three and the exchange there. The ball never cleanly in. You see Revere with the left hand trying to figure out if he's going to get it in there or not. Peterson clearly does not have the ball. It is a fumble. Had to be recovered by Georgia Southern. And that must be it. If, if Georgia Southern had the football, then it's a touchdown. The extra point he is on the way and good. Boy, it, it, that's even even watching that, you could see the ball loose. You saw yeah. McCoy there. And I would suspect that in the pileup and in the ensuing uh, scrum, that ball may have changed hands a, a few couple times. times. And I think that's why, and it looked like at the end that Montana emerged with the ball, and that's the why, the, yeah, why they but, felt but he, they had but it. But McCoy had it, had possession, and then once they take it away, it's too late. It's already a touchdown. You can see the wind is forcing Georgia Southern to hold on the kickoff. Tanner Hancock from Montana returns it to the 23-yard line. Let's go down below to Dave Ryan. Well, Rich, in talking with Joe Glenn, the Montana coach, on Thursday after their practice, he was very concerned about the home run big play potential of Georgia Southern. He thought if they give up five and ten yard option runs throughout the day, they'd probably be all right defensively, but emotionally the big play could hurt them a lot because it really gets them devastated and trying to stop the Southern high-powered offense. Guys, by the way, starting to rain again, so ball handling and footing could be a problem. And now we focus on Drew Miller and his handling the football. Miller is the first team, one double-A All-American quarterback this year. And his Grizzlies put it in play. Miller with time. Fires it out to T.J. Oakers. And Oakers is across the 35, out to the 36-yard line. That's a first down for Montana. On first and 10, Miller again with time. This one is over the hands of his tight end, Spencer Frederick. Second down and 10. Long count from Miller, movement and flags. 
Miller with time to the sidelines. Wide open is Atu Molden. Molden is into Georgia Southern Territory and down to the 47-yard line. There's no question that Drew Miller can throw it. Well, you talked about the advantage that Georgia Southern has in terms of their option. The spread passing attack is an advantage for Montana. Georgia Southern has not seen that this season. Fleming Williams will pick up the flag. First down and 10. Not a lot of man coverage from Georgia Southern today against the spread attack. And there's Humphrey, the kid from Eagle River, Alaska, with his first carry. Inside the 40, a seven-yard pickup. Uh, Rich, two things happening right here. You know, you got the win, which is why they came out and threw the ball, but it's really the power game they're going to get to. Watch inside here, the bigger offensive line. You see the pushback? About five yards, they're pushing back the Georgia Southern defensive, defensive line. Only about 240 pounds across up front, about 300 for Montana. Second down and three. The motion is Hancock. Miller, the former BYU Cougar. Little screen pass. Humphrey. Johansi Humphrey. And he's out of bounds to the 27-yard line. Ryan Haddon again made the stop. 11 yards on the pickup. We talked about Johansi Humphrey using the ball early in the ball game well, on the screen pass they got the pressure coming and you'll see him here and then you'll see them let the pressure up inside and then they'll set the screen up here and Johansson will come out to that side that's all it is simple screen pass let the pressure up inside Johansson comes on out there and yo yo Humphrey on his way down the field Humphrey has had quite a year this year two tight end set for Montana and Humphrey to the 20, Humphrey, he's 10, flags go down. And he is out of bounds at the six yard line. The flag back at the 15 may have been a face mask. Well, keep in mind, Rich, we talked about Montana's home field, three weeks of snow. Now, no snow, they're going to Humphrey early in the ball game, using their size, pounding, going away from their normal tendency to throw the football. Long discussion about this. Inadvertent flag. They'll pick it up. Here's a look. Big run by Humphrey. Yeah, watch the eyes. The eyes tell you where the hole's going to be. He finds it. He gets a good lead block in there. And as good runners do, they find their way to the outside where the smaller guys are. He's got nice, shifty feet. Not great speed, but good feet. Use that lateral movement to get outside. First and goal, Montana. Georgia Southern scored on their first possession. Montana's first possession. Miller, not real mobile. To the corner, and it's incomplete. They've played in all kinds of conditions, as you would expect this year. Humphrey slips, still he has a hole, and still with a flag coming down, He's down to the four-yard line. Uh, Rich, you saw Humphrey go down there as he tried to do the counter step, starting one way and then coming back the other. And Dave talked about the, the footing down there. Watch, you'll see him. He's just getting up after trying to start to his left, and that throws the timing off of that running play. Humphrey was not recruited by a lot of big schools. There's the slip. He felt he was good enough to go to a Division I program in the Northwest, and a lot of the Division I schools backed off of him, but not Montana. Speed. You know, he runs about a 4'6", 4'6", 3", 4'6", 5", 40-yard dash, and that's not fast enough. Penalty looked like it was a hold on Montana. Yep, it was a hold. They'll bring it back to the 14. Second down and goal still. Miller. Throwing. It's intercepted. Picked off. Georgia Southern's Michael Ward has the football. And he's down at the two-yard line. You know, that is just a difficult, difficult play. I mean, Drew Miller had time to throw that ball away. 
and Michael Ward is sitting right in the center watching his eyes. Miller wants to go outside, and then when he came back, he's got nobody open there. He's got no chance to complete that pass, Rich, and that's just panicking under pressure, trying to make something happen. Georgia Southern with the lead and the ball, but backed up against their end zone, and remember, they had real problems hanging on to the ball in their first possession. Peterson is popped at the four-yard line. Andy Pedick does the popping. You don't want turnovers when you're in the red zone, when you're inside the 20. Your quarterback has to understand. Throw the ball away. Don't force it. You got another play, and in the worst possible scenario, take the three points. Don't come away with nothing. It hurts your team too much mentally. Option. This is Revere. And Jerry Revere's got a first down and more. He's across the 15 and out to the 18-yard line. There's a look at Michael Ward, just a sophomore out of Savannah, Georgia. It's all about special play at quarterback, making the plays you have to. Right here, Drew Miller makes an ill-advised throw, and it hurts his team. But on the other hand, J.R. Revere makes the right decision here on the option, takes it away from Adrian Peterson, works his way to the outside to get him out of the hole. Quarterback play is so important in a championship game. I think some people feel that because he runs the option, Revere doesn't have to make the choices or the decisions as there's a, another pitch. Andre Weathers on the outside. There goes Andre Weathers. Weathers knocked out of bounds. Calvin Coleman caught him. Andre Weathers out of High Point, North Carolina. North versus South. As we came into this ball game, we thought about the difference in speed. These Southern fellas have got all the speed. Watch Weathers on the pitch outside. Look at him separate a little bit. Once again, it is Coleman who comes over to make, once again, a touchdown saving tackle. That's a man from Florida who knows how to run with the guys from the South. Niceville, Florida. Revere. He's dropped back at the 36-yard line. A quartet of Grizzlies, Corey Mertis. The first to get there, Andy Pedic was there as well. All right, Rod Gilmore, if you're the defensive coordinator at Montana, then how do you attack this Georgia Southern offense? They got to stop allowing Revere to make decisions. They got to start hitting him right now and make him give up the ball very quickly. He's got too much time when he comes down the line, and that's putting Montana on its heel. They can't allow that to happen. They've taken Peterson out of the game so far, but right. not Revere. Absolutely. And that is Peterson straight ahead, and Montana hammers him. Kick those Rodneys all over the place. Third huh? down. Revere's in trouble, and he goes down. He's caught by Dave DeCoit, the freshman linebacker. Second sack of the day, 56th sack of the season. A great job out of the Montana defense that time. Putting him in a long situation. That's what you do with option teams. And then Decoit on the pressure from the outside. When you run the spread option, you don't have guys to protect the quarterback. A high kick, and it looks like Georgia Southern will have a chance to down this one. They will. Montana will start this drive from almost the exact same spot that Georgia Southern had their last drive. And Montana is backed up near their end zone now. Johansi Humphrey takes the handoff, and Humphrey, strong individual, carries Robert LeBlanc out across the 10-yard line. That is John Pate, the defensive line coach for Georgia Southern, and, and he plays the part. <laughs> yeah, oh, of course it's a defensive line coach. Who else gets that kind of stuff? This guy right here, you know, that's what you do when you're a defensive line coach. You don't need a mask. You headbutt your players when they come off the field. Now, you don't think that was a motivating ploy at all, do you? <laughs> it could have been. You never know. You got to show a little blood out there. You got rain, you need blood. Montana would like points. They had a nice drive that resulted in the turnover right on the goal line. Here's Humphrey again, and he rips off another eight yards out to the 19-yard line. The, the rain has kind of let up, but you can see that the field is getting chewed up a bit right now. Dave Ryan, what's going on? Yeah, Rich, luckily for the players, no more rain, but the footing is going to get worse before it gets better. It seems that really because of the rain we had heavy this morning and last night, hurting a player's footing big time. It wasn't great after the warm-ups. It's got a lot worse, especially toward the batteries and the middle of the field, really getting chewed up out here. Yeah, Dave, they had a lot of rain 
uh, this week as well. Georgia Southern has a, has a history of rain and tough footing on this field as Humphrey is over to the 24 yard line. Two years ago in the national championship game, Georgia Southern took on UMass. It was wet and the conditions we're told are were just like this. They fumbled six times, a school record, and lost in that championship game. Well, that's the problem with the option offense when you play in wet weather. You have to handle the ball so much, you take it in the fullback, you take it out, you pitch it, ball's gonna hit the ground when it's wet. So you're saying the wet weather is better for the passing team than the running team in this game? Absolutely. Second down, and five. Miller over the middle, and it's deflected and broken up. A nice play by David Young, the strong safety. Well, you know, Georgia Southern is just sitting in a two-deep uh, defense, and they're just reading the eyes of Drew Miller. And Young just broke right on his eyes. He's watching him, and he's telegraphing the pass, so they're getting a nice break. Georgia Southern defensive backs are pretty good. They can play in the pros. Yes, they can. Just ask Kawaki Thomas and your buddy, Earthwing Morland. Well, he's got reasons to play in the pros. <laughs> Everyone's a shining star. Third down and five. Miller sort of goes side saddle behind center. Throwing on the run. It's caught, but not enough for the first down. Caught by Spencer Frederick. Michael Youngblood made a nice stop, and Montana must punt. You know, the really good quarterbacks can look you off. They can look one way, then come back and throw another. Right now, he's looking right side, staring down one receiver, and you're saying, oh, that's where he's going. I'm going with him. Where does he throw the ball? Right out there. Montana's first punt. Mike Reedy. And it's a wobbler picked up by Anthony Williams. And Williams is out to the 39-yard line. They'll mark him at the 40. Georgia Southern, a 7-0 lead over Montana. Paul Johnson, the head coach, says the option offense can be exciting. He goes back to that run last year by Adrian Peterson. If, if you've watched him play throughout his career, he does those things so often uh, that, uh, you know, it didn't seem to me like it was anything special until I got, you know, out of the game and got to watch it on tape. But uh, he's, a, he's a very special guy, and, and when he does those things, it, nothing surprises me that he does. Ron Gilmore, he hasn't surprised Montana, though, today. Well, no, they're focusing their defense on him. Their inside guys are really pinching or angling towards the inside so that he doesn't do it. But this is what he did last year in the championship game that we saw. Watch him at the end here. He says, I, I don't want you near me. Get off me. I got places to go. <laughs> He's a runner. That was one of the plays of the year in college football. And it almost won an SP. And now Revere is swallowed up. And Montana really smelled out the option on that one. Dave DeCoit came up and made another big play. Well, DeCoit made the tackle, but he didn't make the play. The play was made by taking away the pitch. There was nowhere for Revere to throw the ball. He couldn't pitch it outside. He had to keep it, so DeCoit got to make the tackle. But watch how they take away the pitch. Watch to the outside. First he starts, oh, Peterson, nah, he's not your guy coming back outside. Watch the outside. Watch the outside. There's nowhere to go with it. That's why DeCoy gets to make the tackle. And if Georgia Southern's going to throw it, you would think this is the down. Third and long reverse throw is caught. Chris Johnson, a slide and catch. He's very close to the first down. Georgia Southern is going for it on fourth. And less than a yard. Peterson. Right near midfield. We'll find out. Peterson, the lone setback, joined by Weathers. Now joined by Myers. And Revere calls a timeout. Were they trying to draw Montana offside? Looks like it. Paul Johnson will talk it over with his quarterback. And the Eagles with the ball faced with fourth and one. Just shy of midfield. That call. We'll go for it. You that don't call. like it. Got a kick. Long count, Revere. Straight ahead, it looks like he has it. He does. First I, down. I still don't like it. You know why? If you're the defending champs and you've dominated this ball game, you know, unless you're Adrian Peterson, look at that graphic, only four yards carrying, 131 for the rest of the team. But if you've dominated this game, act like the champion, act like you've been here, kick the ball and keep the mental edge in the ball game. Don't act like you're somewhat desperate right now. Don't give Montana a chance to, to grab a, a toehold, is what you're saying? Oh, he's open. He's got it. He's got Johnson wide open. He'll walk in the end zone. 49 yards.
Savage. You gotta like that, Rod Gilmore. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. That's why you don't wear a coach's <laughs> headset. <laughs> <laughs> now that is just like a champion, oh, wouldn't you say, Rod? Wait until he puts on the tape and heard that I second guessed him. He may have heard it from the start. Option pass. They fake the corner, bid on it, and Johnson has nobody around. There's a corner out there who has a job to play man-to-man -man coverage. He doesn't. He gives it up. Good night. Now uh, you know who's going to kick out of that? Whoa, no one's going to kick out of this. Scott Shelton is down, and Georgia Southern misses the opportunity for a point. Uh, Reese Davis doesn't have to worry about me going into coaching and leave him in the studio by himself. That's right. <laughs> I think Reese is happy to have the weekend off from you this weekend. That's it. What a big day it's been for the big plays. A 73, a 53-yard run, and now Revere's touchdown pass to Chris Johnson of 49 yards. Well, when you're a corner and you're playing against an option team, it's mentally challenging. You have to play the run, play after play after play. They never throw it. The moment you start thinking, I can take a play off, is the time they go up top on you. And playing an option team, you always, in the back of your mind, say to yourself, I, you just don't want to fall behind. And Montana has done that. They've slipped behind 13 to nothing. Revere who threw 12 touchdowns in the regular season and he hooks up here with Chris Johnson down below is Dave Ryan Dave well guy J.R. Revere tells us there's nothing more satisfying to the Eagles offense than seeing frustration in the eyes of the opposing defense it stems from trying to stop that Eagle powerful option game J.R. tells me that Montana not knowing who's going to get the ball it was going to be a pitch a handoff to Peterson and maybe he keeps himself or in that case he throws long he's keeping the opposition on its heels all game looks like Montana could be in trouble with this offense there are a lot of people that have had trouble with this offense for a long time, Tanner Hancock. This is Hancock, and there goes Hancock. Tanner Hancock inside Georgia Southern Territory to the 44-yard line. Montana, the number one seed in this game, but not the favorite, and that's irked some Grizzly, including Jimmy Ferris. You know, he's a great guy, and we, we share a lot of things in common off the field. Um, just good buds, um, and we have a real understanding of each other on the field. Um, you know, he uh, he feels like I'm a guy that he can count on. You know, when when the pressure's on him, and I feel the same way. I I, I pretty much know that as long as I get my job done, run a good route, get open, that you know Drew's going to put the ball in the money. So I mean, both on and off the field, I think we work um, you know really well together. We have a great relationship in both places. And, uh, it's a guy I'm going to miss, man. I'm going to miss playing with. I'm going to miss. Speaking of great relationships, you know, for sure. he was talking about the relationship between Drew Miller, the quarterback, and himself. And Ryan Haddon, after that 22-yard catch by Jimmy Ferris, laid the lumber to Ferris. Oh, Ferris has a great relationship with Miller. Miller hung him up to dry a little bit there in that two-deep uh, coverage, and he took the shot. As good receivers will do, he concentrated on the ball and took the shot to get the first down. I think they're still buds though. Yeah. Yeah, he's the quarterback. He's got to throw him the ball. You're, you're always buds with the quarterback. You can't get too ticked when he throws you the ball. Ferris is really the emotional barometer of this team. He's the guy that Montana looks for for inspiration. Now watch him here. He's looking back. He knows that the hit is coming. He doesn't care. Bam. Yeah, that's right on the ribs. Yeah, that, that knocks the wind out of you. That's a two deep coverage. The two safeties are coming back to the middle to wipe up plays like that. And you just got to be a tough guy and hang in there and catch the ball. And Ferris is on his feet. And it looks like it was just the wind knocked out of him. Yeah, he's, we've all been there. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's a tough little guy. Six feet, 190. And he's had a bushel full of big catches this year. 71 catches for Montana coming into this one. And Montana is in Georgia Southern Territory for the second time today. First and 10 from the 23. Humphrey, Gino Tutera. Not Gino Toretta, but Gino Tutera. 
made the stop. No, Toretta would have thrown the ball. He, he doesn't like to call running plays, your old pal. Different name, same foot speed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I, I talked to Joe Glenn yesterday about what he would do if he fell behind by 14 points, and he said, you know, I'm going to be patient. I'm not going to start panicking and have my quarterback throw the ball around. I'm going to hand it off some more. So we're looking at this now. Will he remain patient on second and eight? Jimmy Ferris did not remain on the sideline. He's back in the ball game. And second down. Miller in trouble and he goes down. If there's a knock on Drew Miller, it's that he's not real mobile and he has trouble avoiding a rush. And Jamar Jones can give you quite a rush. Well, and we talked about Jones at the beginning of the ball game as you see Miller is down now. And John Edwards is in the ball game for Montana. Edwards swings it out to Humphrey, trying to get inside. 20. He's short of the first down by about oh, seven yards. And there goes Drew Miller to the locker room. And obviously that's not good for Montana. No, you never like you to see your leader go down. I mean, that, that hurts a team whenever that happens. And Miller is the leader on this team. But he's been down before this season for this team. So they know how to play with Edwards in there. Montana is going after three points. Joe Glenn has brought Chris Snyder on. And on a wet, treacherous turf, he's going for a 38-yard field goal. 16 of 25, 5 of 8 from this range. Good, strong kick. And Montana has three points. We saw Drew Miller go into the locker room a few moments ago. The trainers tell me a sprained knee at the very best. That's what they're hoping. It could be at the very worst, guys. Torn ligaments. They're going to look at it closely. So that's the injury for Drew Miller and Montana's hopes, as Rich said, could really ride on him coming back in this game today. Hey, Rhino, what's the what's the atmosphere like on the Montana sideline? Rod said they weren't going to panic if they fell down by two touchdowns. How do they feel down there? Well, I think as soon as uh, Drew Miller came out, was injured, it looked like this bench was a little bit deflated, Rich, to be honest with you. It's kind of been an emotional roller coaster after the early interception. They seemed to really have some struggles. They got the ball back, though, and looked like they were more on an, uh, an up note, but certainly losing their quarterback and leader because he's got such a great, powerful huddle presence as his teammates and Drew has told us over the past couple days really will hurt them. There's a look at John Edwards. What does he bring to the party that Miller doesn't have, Rod? Well, he brings, first of all, a little bit of moxie. I mean, they call him Montana. They call him Joey Montana, Johnny Montana, because he steps in. He's from Montana. The other thing he brings is a little bit of mobility. He'll be able to get outside on the rush. He'll run the quarterback draw. A little different look for Georgia Southern from his quarterback. Not the same pocket passer, but you're right. They'll, they'll change that game plan a little bit. Snyder's kick is a good, strong one. And Andre Weathers out to the 19 yard line. Adrian Peterson not getting the ball here. Weathers on the pitch. All of a sudden, Rod, Montana is stopping this option look. Well, it's all about getting good play out of their safeties. You saw number three, Trey Young, come flying into the picture that time to take away the option. They're doing a nice job now of working from the quarterback, not giving him a place to go, and getting over to stop the option outside. Georgia Southern is going to have to change up their blocking to keep Trey Young from getting out there. Second down. Revere's going to throw it over the middle. Broken up nicely. Flags down. Vince Huntsberger. Dr. Defense, they call him. Well, and you have to like the call out of Georgia Southern. They were planning that to get at Trey Young. Trey Young, you saw, made the play from the free safety spot on the net. On the last play, he made the tackle. So they had him cheating up. And that's why they come back and throw the pass over the middle. 15 yards on the interference. And here's Vince Hunsberger. You'll see him showing up in the play. There we are right there. Now, come ah. on, Mr. Gilmore. You, are, you don't even want to ask me. I, you I don't even want to ask. I know me. what's coming, though. Give it to me. You know, you got to let guys play in the secondary a little bit, right? All right. <laughs> they call him Dr. Defense. He's a 3.91 student in molecular biology. He is going to go to med school when he's done. Now, the officials told me yesterday that, hey, they let him play in the secondary, right? They tell me that. This is a crew from the MEAC. And so far, they've done a pretty good job. Straight ahead goes Georgia Southern. 
Rich and Rodney wondering what the problem is with Adrian Peterson not having a big game so far. He's wearing a very bulky brace on his left elbow. It's a hyperextended elbow he suffered during the regular season. He told us it wasn't going to bother him too much, but today he's having some problems with it, guys. And finally, he breaks loose. And you can see him land on that elbow. He, you know, people say, well, well, how should an elbow affect a running back? A guy as strong as Peterson uses that upper body to his advantage. Well, he uses the whole body to his advantage, and his yards after catch, after contact, just amazing. On the first play, 127 of 135 rush yards have come on first down. He just did that on that last play. The first time he's busted loose today. And Revere and Peterson get swamped. Good penetration by the Montana defensive front. You know, but they don't want Adrian Peterson to beat them, so they're loading up coming inside. I mean, they're coming right now. Georgia Southern has had big plays when they've gone outside. A 73 and a 53 yard run, and the 49 yard touchdown pass from Chris Johnson. Uh, the more you see the pressure inside, Rich, the more you figure outside options going to be there. Outside option, Revere caught from behind and dropped at the 48-yard line. Adam Boomer, appropriately named the senior out of American Falls, Idaho. That's a good job out of him. Hey, he's coming at a real disadvantage. He is not as fast as J.R. Revere. But his job is to keep Revere inside, contain him, and make the play. And Boomer did it. And Revere's back in hell. He's saying, no, 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 we'll run it again. I'll beat Boomer this time. <laughs> third down and long. Georgia Southern one of three on third down. Revere, a straight drop. That's rare. And he throws deep. And it's overthrown. There's a flag down. Was the ball uncatchable? Or did they take too long on the play clock? You got it. And that's not a penalty Montana can decline. Paul Johnson runs this spread option better than any team I've seen in a long time. How come this offense isn't at the Division I level more, Rod Gilmore? Well, it's not glamorous. You, you know, you, you talk to athletic directors and, and fans, and they like guys that throw the football. You know, Georgia Southern just wins with it. Yeah, but they win championships yep. with it. Dropped pitch, a lot of room to go. And Peterson right on the sticks, very close to the first down. Now, how about a nice adjustment there? Getting Peterson outside. He's bottled up inside, so they get him outside now. Got a little, little speed option to get Peterson outside, get him away from the tackles inside, and let him make the play. And he dropped that ball, you know, that, that brace it doesn't allow him to get both hands up there with the flexibility to catch the ball. Peterson starting to get going here. Alachua, Florida is his hometown. Revere got it to Peterson again. Bam! Bam! <laughs> and Rich, and again, <laughs> we talk about yards after contact. And if you didn't see the tape last year in the championship game when he threw guys off of him, he said, watch me today. I don't want guys in my way. <laughs> you know something? If you're Anthony Brown, you don't know you want to be there. I mean, if you're going to bring it, you better bring it when you get in front of Adrian Peterson. Peterson straight ahead to the 27 yard line. All right, it's the option. And my question was, why is not successful at the division one level? Paul Johnson feels it would be successful. You know, everybody thinks that uh, if you want to be exciting and you want to have big plays, you have to throw the ball and, and do those kind of things. Uh, a couple years ago, we had uh, the number one ranked passing team in the country in our league. And we did a break now at the end of the season. We had twice as many plays of over 25 yards than they did. But if you ask somebody that on the street, you know, they think that when you say option football, you think four yards in a cloud of dust. So it's, uh, I think there's a uh, misconception out there about it. And it may not be glamorous enough for everybody. 
Yeah, but you know, he does deliver big plays. 78 big plays on the season. A couple of big plays today. Look at that offensive yardage, Rich. 236 yards already. And again, another long third down, but remember they picked the last one up when Peterson went 12 yards. Peterson straight ahead to the 27-yard line. He's well short of the first down, and he might be short of field goal range. We'll find out. Well, the, the good thing he has going for him is the wind is that at his kicker's back. All right. And Scott Shelton, the sophomore, who also punts, is on, and it looks like a field goal attempt. Yeah, he's going to get about another five yards or so out of limp because of the wind. The flags are, you know, standing straight up there. His long this year is 39. This is 45. No! Had the leg, but not the accuracy. Yeah, without the wind, he doesn't get close on that thing. That win gave him about another five or six yards, got him close on it. That's a big defensive stop for Montana. Well, you know, they settled down, but for the big plays that they've given up so far in this ball game. You know, the one time that was the blown coverage, they didn't cover Chris Johnson, he gets the touchdown, and then the opening play. Well, you know, you hadn't seen the option before. So their defense has played pretty well, but for those big plays, they got to get Trey Young involved still defensively. Their offense played well in the first drive, but they've slowed since then. And they'll keep it on the ground. Ben Drinkwater, the senior out of Great Falls, is across the 35, down to the 37-yard line. Let's go down below and find out about Drew Miller. What's up, Dave Ryan? Rich, the news is not good for Montana at all. A second degree MCL sprain in his right knee. He is out for the game. So John Edwards takes over the rest of the way. As we know, he offers a little more mobility. Try to get that elusive rush against him in the uh, Montana offense. And he's 4-0 as a relief pitcher. And here's a look at some of his mobility. And Edwards scampers to the sideline and dives out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Nine-yard pickup. Jason Neese made the stop. Well, it's important for him to make a play like this. You know, some guys, you know, in basketball, some guys need a dunk to get going. He needs to get out of the pocket and run the ball to get going. This will help settle him down. Now he knows he can run the ball against these guys. He'll feel like it's his game right now. He's ready to run. I'd let him throw the ball right now because I think he's starting to, starting to feel it, Rich, with that run. He's got the side saddle look going. Very close up. On the draw, this is Drinkwater. And Drinkwater is inside Georgia Southern Territory to the 48-yard line. Dickie V, huh? Dickie V was on today. He was uh, he was in full glory today. Edwards in a hurry, and he dumps it to Jimmy Ferris. It's incomplete. Flags come down. There was a late hit. Ferris, as he usually is, was right in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Ferris is not going to back away from anything. I mean, he, he's the kind of guy that will, you know, you talk a little smack to him before the ball game, he'll talk it right back. And he's got the red hair, the goatee, he's got the earrings going. The, look at that. You know, he's got the stuff under his eyes. He's, yeah, he's, you want to bring it to me? Hit me. I don't care. I'm coming back. The kid, the, the pride of Lewiston, Idaho. Who says they don't have tough guys in Idaho? I never said that. I've been to Idaho. They got tough guys in yeah. Georgia, too. <laughs> John Pate, the defensive line coach. Yeah, Ferris will probably run into him pretty soon. Now, that's got to be a motivational tool. Because oh, because you clean it off yeah, by now. Yeah, yeah, you, you clean yourself <laughs> up a little bit. The true test will be in the third quarter if he leaves it on. <laughs> hey, 15th game of the year. You're coaching it. You're playing it. You play with a little blood. John Edwards, why the side saddle, Rob? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Tanner Hancock dropped. Where's Toretta or McPherson when I need him? You know, I mean, Kosar said it helped get him away from the line of scrimmage. But, you know, it looks weird to me. I can't believe it really helps you that much. Well, it's been working all year for a 13 and 1 Montana team. So. Mike Youngblood made the stop. He just joined us. Drew Miller's been knocked out of this game. John Edwards, the super sub, is in for Montana. Second down. And 13. Edwards. Iron 
inside. And incomplete. Yeah, my bad, my bad. Now you see, that's why I said three plays ago, let him throw it. Because he was in a rhythm. He had just run the football. He was feeling confident. Now you have three or four running plays since then. And now he's had time to think. He go, oh, okay, now I got to throw the ball. He sailed that one. Third down, third team. Montana has yet to pick up a third down conversion today. Edwards with time. He ran out of it. The ball was deflected. Jamar Jones, the speed rusher, yeah, got Jones. a hand on him. Jones is just winning his matchup. I mean, they're not blitzing. That is just all Jones. He's just coming around the right. Look at him. He's just going right by him. I got enough upper body strength where you can't knock me down. He just takes him outside with his speed. Mike Reedy to pump the way, looking for the corner, and instead he gets the Georgia Southern pep squad. They'll mark it at the 24. 13-3. <laughs> Montana's defense has made some stops, but Paul Johnson's spread option, which has been dominant in the playoffs, five national championships. Johnson won his first last year. Flags down. That's Everett who uh, who jumped. He didn't jump. He sprinted. <laughs> he came out of the block like a sprinter. You know he's gonna hear the gun go. Watch this. Ah. <laughs> the gun goes. He's off. Remember the movie Mash? <laughs> I do. <laughs> First and 15. And we're here. Out to the 30. Lost the ball and it squirts out of bounds, but they'll bring it back to the 30 yard line that is short of the first down. And you see, Montana has not had success playing their defense that way. And when I say that way, I mean they allow the man to go to the pitch and leave the quarterback open, leaving the quarterback for the free safety or the linebacker to come get. That's not working. What has worked for them is to eliminate the quarterback first off and then allow the free safety to go out and get the pitch. Second down five. I like that football talk. I like that serious football talk. Of course, you never had to face the option, did you? Oh, nice hit. Whoa. Did I face the option? Trey Young came yeah. up. Yeah, that's what we're just talking about. That's the adjustment. We talked about it. Trey Young, when he's at the free safety spot and comes out. That's what we're talking about. This is the adjustment. He's way, you can't see him. He's in the middle of the screen, but he's going to come out there like that. He's the free safety. Now he shows up. Now he shows up. That's the adjustment. That's what Montana did. That's what we're talking about. Nicely done. Third down and five. Revere puts it up, hit, and dropped. It's incomplete. Yeah, when you know the option and you know what hasn't worked, you go back to making sure you do the right thing. Get the quarterback here and run your free safety in from the outside. Have him come help you and look at all the distance that Trey Young covers. That's playing option football. And Rich, I saw Oklahoma do it. They killed us with it back in the old, the old days. All right, so you did face the yeah. option when you were covering guys at the Stanford. Stopped is T.J. Olkers back of the 24. Nice punt, 48 yards. The man with the number three on his helmet is Adrian Peterson. He and Georgia Southern have made this championship game a family affair, haven't they, Dave Ryan? Well, that's for sure. Porter Peterson is here along with the rest of the family, Rodney and Lakeisha, and Retha Mom is in there as well. And you see the uh, Lakeisha's got the Indianapolis Colts logo on the hat because older brother Michael is a linebacker with the Colts. They play Miami this weekend. You must be one proud pop with all these athletes in your family. Uh, yes, I'm real proud of, the, of what the guys and young lady have done. Uh, the most important thing is they stay in focus with the academics as, as well as being on the football field and basketball coach. Now, you guys are from just outside Gainesville, Florida. How in the world do you go and see all the games, all the teams where you have Adrian playing and Michael playing in the NFL? Well, it's tough, but we juggle between the games. If I can't make it, then Rita goes. Sometimes we have to split them up. But uh, like I said, I want to make that correct. We're from Alachua, Florida. So uh, everybody back in Alachua will get some credit. Now, we understand Rodney's quite an athlete with basketball and football. Is he going to be the next AP at Georgia Southern? Well, we hope until we, he's just like Mike and Adrian. You haven't decided what school he's going to attend. Uh, 
But wherever, you know, we just hope the Lord that he pan out like the other guys. Great seeing you guys. All right, thank you. Great athletes in this family, guys. Yeah, such a great family in Alachua that they've they've named a street after the Petersons. Not one Peterson, but the whole Petersons. At Peterson Place in Alachua, Florida. Well, that's the way it ought to be. You know, parents don't get enough credit. You, you remember this deal, you know? You follow the kids around in Little League and you follow them around in college. You spend your life following your kids around. Montana. Needs one yard for a first down. And Humphrey over the left side, very close to it. Looks like he's got it. Well, we've talked a lot about Peterson. Johansi Humphrey had a good first series. What's happened to Montana's ground game since? Well, a number of things. You know, they have really kind of been off the field, and they've tried to get their passing game going. I think they do need to go back to this. You know, they got to establish Edwards, but they got to pound the ball some more inside. They've had success running, and they can wear down the Georgia Southern defensive line by continuing to pound them. These two running backs are probably in the furthest spots on the map of the United States. One is from Florida, one is from Alaska. And the one from Alaska did not make the catch. Eagle River, Alaska. Second down and 10. The rain continues to fall. It's picked up here. It stopped for a bit, and you can see it's continued. The footing has been suspect most of the day. And they're throwing into the rain. And into the, not the rain, the wind. The wind is blowing into Edwards' face right now. It makes it tougher to throw the football down the field. Edwards is two of six in relief of Drew Miller, who's out for the game. This one complete and caught by Humphrey. A big hit, and Humphrey fights his way to the stick. He's right on the line. Michael Youngblood made the stop for Georgia Southern. All right, here's your defensive back tip. You know, when you are aware of the elements, you can settle in and use them to your advantage. So now the Georgia Southern defensive backs need to understand that they're not going to throw deep. They need to understand they can jump the shorter route. This is a time where you would take a chance at making a pick because you can overplay the shorter routes. Backup quarterback, wind in his face, think about making a big play. Montana has yet to throw the ball deep today. And they're looking right into the wind right now. Humphrey. And E.O. Humphrey rolls to the 49-yard line. A four-yard pickup. Dreek Cooper made the stop for Georgia Southern. Four sixteen in that first half. Rod, I think Montana has to be happy. They're only down by 10 right now. Yeah, it could be a lot more. I mean, given the way their offense has been off the field and Georgia Southern has been on the field, they, they could be down by a couple more scores here. Edwards, lots of time, throws it short, and it's incomplete. Tanner Hancock was the intended receiver. Well, there you go. I mean, you could see he couldn't get the ball down the field. That ball died at about 12 or 13 yards, and that's the win and the footing. Montana, the champions of the Big Sky Conference in the three-game playoff. They beat Eastern Illinois, beat Richmond, and then had a big goal line stand and won in overtime to beat Appalachian States. That was an overtime win. Edwards has got to be careful here, putting the ball up in this situation. Ferris in motion, third down five. Edwards scrambling, throwing, and his intended receiver Ben Drinkwater did not uh, see the ball, and it's incomplete. Georgia Southern out of the Southern Conference, 12 and 2, their regular or their final record coming into this game, and they had very little problems. The final game, the semifinal game against Delaware, was on the road. Yeah, they they had a good year. They lost to Georgia to open the season, and lost to Furman late in the season without Peterson. The 29 yard line on the return, Anthony Williams. Now that kid's got it going on. You've got insulation yeah. and you've got rain right. and water prevention. Yeah, no crying though. No, there's no crying in Chad Newton. Or in one double A football for that matter. Revere throwing on the run and it's caught by Chris Johnson who is loose. He's 40. Johnson slips and goes down at the 31 yard line. Now, Rich, I said you take your chances as a defensive back, understanding the elements. This quarterback has the wind at his back. You don't take the chance now. The ball will get there. 
You know, he's got that tailwind. Johnson, big receiver, he's gonna get a couple of extra miles an hour and a little bit more yardage out of this ball as he throws it. Look at that. Ah, now, you can't take the chance. DP Parker took the chance there. Not a good decision. It's almost a forward pass to Adrian Peterson, who's knocked down at the 24-yard line. That is four plays over 30 yards now by Georgia Southern. Well, that's a big play. I mean, you know, you, you heard Johnson talk about it. It may not be a glamorous passing attack, but it is a very exciting option team. I mean, they get big plays all the time. Four of them over 30 yards today. You wonder, would the Georgia Bulldogs be better off with an offense like this with him at the helm? That's right, Georgia's still looking for a head coach. Peterson, Adrian Peterson to the 15 yard line. Another first down, Trey Young made the stop and Montana is on the ropes right now. I tell you, the Georgia Bulldogs would be a lot better off with Adrian Peterson in their backfield. This guy is a good inside runner. And you see the shiftiness, and then when he gets contact, he's delivering a blow. You see the splits there, and watch him. He's got the shifty feet, finds it, runs right through arm tackles, and can deliver a blow against the guys in the secondary. Revere pitches it forward, and Peterson slides out of bounds. You know, this guy, Peterson, is going to be a Heisman Trophy candidate next year as well. And next year, he will be the leading rusher all time in the state of Georgia, passing Herschel Walker. You know, he ran in Georgia this year, at Georgia, against Georgia. Opening game. 152 yards on 27 carries against the Bulldogs. Yeah, look at this. 23 yards after contact. I told you the guy doesn't go down when you hit him. Revere is hit, and he goes down, but not after a nice pickup. Clock continues to roll. Revere down to the six. We're under two minutes left. First half. If I'm Montana, I call a timeout here. I gather my defense, and I say, guys, keep them out of the end zone. We can give up the three points. Keep them out of the end zone. That's going to be our rallying cry right now. I think these guys are tired. They need a pep talk. You need to get them to hang on for just a one more play right here. This is it for them. This one play right now, Rich. Montana has three timeouts. Georgia Southern two left. Third down one. And Revere will burn a timeout. Wind howling, rain falling. Georgia Southern driving. Football right now just outside the Montana five on third and one. And Georgia Southern 44 touchdowns on the ground this year. The Eagles champions of the Southern Conference Rod they've had trouble with a, a snap on an extra point they've missed a field goal is this four down territory. Well if you have confidence in your kicker and you think you can get it cleaned up no I wouldn't I just go ahead and take the points here and cruise into the halftime if I'm Georgia Southern. Montana's got to be thinking Peterson inside and the quarterback. It's Peterson inside and he falls forward he's got the first down. They'll stop the clock to move the chains. And Paul Johnson sends in fresh troops. Uh, Montana has to think back to last week when they were about to lose to Appalachian State, and they had a goal line stand that allowed the game to get into overtime. They have to keep them out of the end zone again right now. One timeout left for Georgia Southern. Revere. Clock rolls. Andy Pedick from behind, the senior out of Helena. Pedick, first team All American, and he showed it on this play. Uh, Pedick has been handled a little bit on the outside, but he gets to use his speed here and chase this thing down. That's what he does best, when he can use his speed. Peterson up and in. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. You know, sometimes, Rich, there is not a hole. And when there's not a hole, you have to create one. And Adrian Peterson created the lane, the hole to give himself a touchdown. Nothing there. Look at this. You'll see him take off. There's nowhere to go. Freeze it right there. There is no hole there. There's only a goal line. And Adrian Peterson will find it. He goes up over and uses his power to get the touchdown. Georgia Southern mishandled the snap earlier. 
This one handled cleanly, and the point is good. Adrian Peterson eventually will wear you down. He has never played a college game in which he has not rushed for more than 100 yards. Yep. If you like consistency, a guy who can run for more than 100 yards and can suit up every ball game for you, that's pretty special. 73 yards so far today. And that was a big, big touchdown for Georgia Southern. Well, and you got to like this. Look at all the dirt and the grass stains on the front of the jersey. I mean, that tells you he's delivering blows. He's falling forward. Good running backs fall forward. The year 2000 has been a good year for Adrian Peterson. And he's just shy of 2,000 yards. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if he went for 2001 next season. Remember, he missed three games with the hyperextended elbow. There was some talk about him leaving early for the NFL. Uh, he told me yesterday, nah, he's going to be back next year. He do this, he is a prospect. Out of his end zone comes Tanner Hancock. He had a long return earlier, and Tanner Hancock is all the way out to the 46-yard line. Now let's see how Montana handles this with 25 seconds left, all three timeouts left. Still, Montana looking into the wind, and they have yet to stretch the field. Well, I don't think they can really stretch it that far with the wind blowing in their face right now. I, I would probably expect them to try something along the lines of a quick screen or so to see if they can get some yards after the catch. But throwing it up there is probably just going to result in a pick because that wind's going to hold it up. Edwards caught and that's Ferris. And Ferris has got a seam. He tries to get to the sideline. To the 40, Montana burns a timeout with 15 seconds left. Twenty to three now. Georgia Southern on top of Montana. They'll need more than ten yards to get in field goal range with the wind blowing in their face. Edwards going to scramble, and Edwards trying to get to the sideline. He does. Gets out of bounds. Clock stops, but there's only eight seconds left. Yeah, right now, you're looking at a 47-yard field goal into the face of the wind, and, it, and that's probably not good enough. They probably need another seven or ten yards to have a shot at it. Chris Snyder, the Grizzly kicker, on the sideline. And Montana is going to burn a timeout. And the wind and the rain coming down. All right, Gilmore. I want to clarify what I said about the Pete Carroll hiring. Not of the, nothing against Pete Carroll, but it's disappointing to me that college football continues to struggle in the area of hiring minority coaches. I mean, you think baseball is bad. College football is worse. It's not even close. I mean, you know, what, 21, 22 jobs open uh, this season, this offseason. Only San Jose State uh, having uh, stepped up to the plate to hire a minority. Uh, not a pretty situation. When is it going to change? I think it's inevitable. It has to change, but it certainly hasn't changed yet. USC and Arizona State certainly had opportunities, and they elected to pass. And USC has a minority athletic director. In As Michigan. does Arizona State. Yeah. Football at the 30-yard line. <laughs> John Pate won't take the blood off, will he? That was from a pregame ritual of a headbutt. Okay, well, does he butt the head again at halftime to get the blood started again? I don't know. John Edwards now with eight seconds left. Montana trying to make something of this. They'll throw it over the middle and throw it incomplete. With two seconds left. You're looking at a 47-yard field goal into the wind. Yeah, they almost didn't get the opportunity to kick that thing. And that ball was picked off. Yep, that's why defensive backs are defensive backs. That's why you are who you are. If you could catch, you'd be a wide receiver. That's why you were a defensive back. <laughs> 52 yards is the longest for Snyder. This is 47. But Rod, he's 
He's looking at about a 20 mile an hour wind in his face. It's pretty stiff right now. This would be an incredible kick. And it's a, a block, although it, it came in low and slow. Georgia Southern blocks it. You can return this. And the Eagles, Ryan Haddon, is having fun running around the field. The first half has come to a close, and it's a tough first half for the Montana Grizzlies. 73 yards on the ground for Peterson. He was our focal point, and he's been the focal point of the Montana defense. But that emphasis has allowed Georgia Southern a lot of big plays in other areas. Montana gets the football, but not the wind to start this half. Atu Molden is out to the 28-yard line. Let's check in with Dave Ryan. Right up. All right, Rich, thanks a lot. Joe Glenn, the Montana coach, told me a moment ago he is confident his team can come back in the second half. He feels John Edwards can play well enough in the stead of Drew Miller. Now, remember, Drew Miller was knocked out of three games this year and didn't start to because of other injuries. They've had plenty of exposure to John Edwards' game. They're going to try the short passing attack, and even though they're behind, try some runs as well to chew up the clock and get back in this game as quickly as possible. Rhino, what's the win factor like down there right now? It's gusty, Rich, and it's raining a lot harder, and the coach told me a moment ago it's going to be a big factor in the second half. Montana on the ground to start with. Johansi Humphrey, the ball carrier. Montana moved the ball, Rod. They had 188 yards of total offense. They just they didn't get the points when they had chances. Well, to. the first drive really hurt them when they got down inside the 20 and they didn't come up with any points. Drew Miller on the sideline there with the uh, crutches. He threw an interception which kept them off the board. That hurt them emotionally, and they really haven't bounced back from that yet behind Johnny Edwards. A sprained knee is the injury that has knocked Drew Miller out of the game. And John Edwards, little inside screen. We haven't seen that much at all. And Atu Molden is out across the 40, and that's really a staple of Montana's offense. They haven't run it much. Well, and they need that. They need some things to get them going like that. What do you do while it's raining and cold and the other guys on the field? Well, you get the bike going. J.R. Revere. He's got to keep those legs going. He's running that option. He's got to warm up. That's J.R. Revere's ride, so to speak. First and 10, Montana. Their own 40. And Humphrey out to the 48-yard line. Montana showing signs of life right now. Yeah, Humphrey had 69 yards in the first half. And hey, second half, he's done a little bit of Adrian Peterson himself. Watch him get his yards after contact. Inside zone play, touch right there, gets by it, and then there he breaks a tackle. You gotta do that to be an effective runner. The hole will not always stay there or be open for you. You have to make yards on your own sometimes. What a huge boost it would be for Montana to come out of the locker room and get some points. And they're going against the wind. Edwards in trouble and he's going down. Freddie Pesqueda along with Carlton Oglesby. Well, this pocket just collapses on him. I mean, this is just an out and out whooping up front. I mean, man to man, not a blitz, five guys blocking four, and three of them get beaten. I mean, that's unacceptable from your offensive line. That should not happen. Third down seven, Edwards. Lots of time and a man open. It's Humphrey, and Humphrey's got a first down and more. Johansi Humphrey to the 41-yard line. Well, he's been the offense. He has been the offense for them, whether it's running the ball or catching it. Now, you'll see the coverage here. They're going to play soft zone here, too deep. Here's Johansi here. He's just going to come out and sit down. And when he sits down inside, he takes advantage of the bad field. Watch him here. He's going to make this guy miss because he slips. The bad field helps him out there, gets the first down. From the 41, Humphrey hit hard by Pescada, the sophomore, who is the defensive leader up front for the Eagles. But no big plays. The Montana offense is not getting any big plays, and the rain and the wind are hurting them more than it's hurting Georgia Southern. And that's because they can't throw the ball effectively. No big plays out of Ferris, their big receiver. Their offense is five yards here, three, two, negative. They have to go too far. Edwards 
Deflected and incomplete. Thrown into coverage. Jason Neese got a hand on it. And that ball held up in the wind once again. He's throwing into the wind. He's got the mud on his helmet. Third down and nine. Well, that's where your linemen come over and they help you out. What? Somebody's got to reach over and wipe that stuff off his helmet. There you go. Look at that. We have the wind blowing, facing it. The rain coming down. Edwards, little dump off. Humphrey trying to make something out of that. He has stopped. It'll be fourth down. And Montana now. And LeVar Rainey made the stop. Montana's going to punt it. And he's still got it, Rod. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, you know, and look, what is right in the middle? Check it, it's below the nose now. It was on the nose and on the side. Now it's at the upper lip, too. It's John Bates. Montana trying to down this, they will. Right at the three yard line. Make it the two. Back in Chattanooga, Georgia Southern football. Rain coming down even harder. Adrian Peterson for maybe a yard. These are some rather big raindrops, Mr. Gilmore. Those are the biggest raindrops I've seen. <laughs> Georgia Southern's offense all year long has just chewed up yardage. They are so consistent. They are so steady. 300 yards or more in 42 of their last 45, and they're over 300 today. Yeah, and their fans, their fans knew it. You know, last night at the restaurant, middle of the meal, all of a sudden the chant went up, Georgia, Southern, Georgia, Southern. <laughs> right in the middle of our meal. We heard it all over the restaurant. It's about a four and a half, five hour drive from Statesboro, Georgia here to Chattanooga. And they've got a lot of folks here. The pitch is stopped down at the five yard line. Mark Myers stopped by Damon Parker. Well, it's been a good play for them most of the day because they've gotten good play out of Paul Collins on the right side. And he's only a freshman. And watch him get off here. Does a nice job there. And that's a win. That's a win if you're tackled. That's a win. Yeah, he's handled his man, created a running lane. That's a good job out of him. They have a true freshman and a pair of sophomores on this offensive line. Third down. Peterson straight ahead and Montana stops him and Georgia Southern in the rain is going to have to punt deep in their end zone. Finley Stadium in Chattanooga the one double a championship game Adrian Peterson limping to the sideline. Georgia Southern on top of the number one seed in one double a football in this championship tournament 16 teams started the playoffs three weeks ago. These two are playing for the national title. And the punt is away with the wind at his back. Scott Shelton with a nice kick. TJ Oakers in a rainstorm is down to the 42. I was going to say, you do not have to adjust your set. <laughs> that is real rain. It's not the fake snow when your picture is bad. The weather across the United States is obviously a, a story today. And here in Chattanooga, it has been. Guys, it is very tough to see, to hear just about anything down here. The conditions are worsening. As Rodney said, the largest raindrops I've ever seen or experienced. It's tough for the players to concentrate down here. How about you, Rhino? You staying dry? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying the best I can, guys. <laughs> Flag down, and the run was about a seven-yard pickup by Ben Drinkwater. The temperature's not bad, but you can see you mix the wind in with a steady downpour. And it's a nightmare for an offense that is a precision throwing uh -oh. offense. And Montana's been able to run the ball this year, but uh, when you're down 17, it, it can be tough. How is Rhino doing? Oh, he's down there somewhere. Oh, no. uh oh. He, you know, he's going to have to go to the umbrella. He's got to go to the umbrella. <laughs> I think that's next. Yeah. You know, Rod, there's, a, man an umbrella. there's an NCAA rule banning umbrellas for sideline announcers. Well, you know, that's it. Yeah. That is about the last rule that we need out of the NCAA now, okay? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but Rhino sure could use one. <laughs> Rules are made to be broken, guys, right? <laughs> First down, Montana. Edwards 
Little screen. That was the right call, but they couldn't execute it. Ben Drinkwater was the intended receiver. And the pressure by Robert LeBlanc. Well, you know, they say a wet field is supposed to equalize you and take away speed. That has not happened. They've got the speed coming on the pressure. Their offense has had speed. Their defense is bringing it. Watch this. Bad footing and all. Right up the middle. That's a good job. Robert LeBlanc coming right up the middle. Great speed. Another look. That's pressure. I think Edwards had a little more time than he thought, though. Yeah, you're right. He did. Second down, drink water. Lost the ball, picked up by Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern has the football. Nick Kearns, the free safety. Uh, this ball comes out late. And this ball is so wet. Doesn't look like he just gets pulled. It just kind of slips out. There it is right there. And Kearns, the junior, out of Augusta. And it's been a magical year for Montana. Things have gone their way up until today. Well, you know, a good indication of that, Rod, is it just stopped the downpour right after they oh, lost oh, the ball. Oh, man. Revere throwing deep. Bow! Oh, man. Chris Johnson was leveled. Damon Parker put the pressure on Revere. Yeah, Calvin Coleman, you know, got out there and hit Johnson. I mean, this is great combination. You got corners, safeties working together. Now, Parker comes in. He's a little guy, but he delivers the blow. And that makes it hold up. But Coleman saves the day deep. Bam! That's delivering it. <laughs> I want to suit up now. <laughs> you have no oh, eligibility. No, no, no. You got rain. You got mud. You got big hits. Revere. Montana's doing a nice job on that option now. Justin Brannon, the senior out of Coal Strip, Montana. Now, you can't tell me that you have not played this stuff before, Rich. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. Here you go. You got your guys coming up. You got to come up and make your play. Your quarterback coming out. He's going to get nailed. You move. Your linebackers move. Your outside men take it away. And there he is making your play. I know, Rich, you had those Saturday afternoons growing up. You'd go out. It was raining. It was wet. It was muddy. And you'd play ball. That's the way you play this game right now. You start feeling it. You go, it's just like when I was a kid. Rod, I will admit that I did on Saturday afternoons play ball like that. But not once did I ever run the spread option <laughs> in my backyard. Oh, okay. You must have been uh, the mad bomber, Daryl LaMonica, or something like that. <laughs> Paul Collins is on his way to the sideline. Collins has played very well at that right tackle spot. Third down and a, a bunch here. I tell you, Coleman has played very, very big for Montana in that secondary. Peterson going nowhere, and Montana's defense holds. Uh, Montana needs to take a chance. They need a play. They need to set up a return, or they need to go after a kick. They need something to spark them. You know, just exchanging punts, exchanging field position isn't getting it done for them. They need a short, short field. They need a turnover. They need something to get them going. Scott Shelton into punt for Georgia Southern. He's got that 20 mile an hour wind at his back, so this one should sail. He's averaging 42 yards a kick today. And he gets away a, a gorgeous kick. Advancing blow. TJ Olkers, Montana bench, wanted a face mask or, or some sort of flag. But Montana will get the football at their own 21 yard line. Dave Ryan back at the sidelines, one double A championship in Chattanooga. Montana head coach Joe Glenn made quite an impression with his team the first day he met them. When he took over the reins in Missoula, he had a team meeting and told his guys, well, a couple of lyrics of the Chattanooga choo choo. Some of the guys thought it was a really corny story, but it showed early on he believed this team could make the one double A championship and get here to Tennessee, and guys, sure enough, they did it. And all they did was go out and lose their first game of the season, Rhino. The, the natives in Missoula were not happy. Mick Dennehy was the coach, and he bolted for Utah State. He took over for Don Reed, who won the national championship. They lost to Hofstra at home, and everyone said, oh, my goodness, we got a new coach, and we're 0-1. 
And 13 wins later, here he is in the championship game. Second down and 10. On the ground with Johansi Humphrey. Now guys, Joe Glenn also this year in the practice leading up to this 1AA championship, we talked about how bad the weather was in Missoula. It was zero degrees. He didn't want to take his team out of it. And they don't have an indoor practice facility for the Grizzlies. So they went to a beer distributorship where Joe worked after he lost his job as offensive coordinator with Montana in the mid-80s, his old friends helping him out. <laughs> in more way than one. Ed Edwards with a throw, and it's caught by Molden. Molden's out to the 38-yard line. LeVar Rainey made the stop. Let, Joe, let, me, let me get this right. So, so they go and they practice in a beer distributorship, right? Yeah. And you're going to tell me. That's an NCAA violation, right? No, no, no. <laughs> Umbrellas, yes. Beer distributorship, okay. no. All right. The story there is, Rod, is that Joe Glenn was on the Montana staff that they all lost their jobs in the mid-'80s. And Joe Glenn stayed in Missoula and worked for that beverage distributorship while Don Reed came in and built this program and got them to national prominence. Reed was a, a great uh, passing coach. He came from Oregon where he tutored guys like Dan Fouts and Norv Turner. And in Don Reed's tenure, uh, Montana went to the spread offense. They got to the national championship. They had a wonderful little quarterback named Dave Dickinson, who was the MVP of, of the Canadian Football League this year. Glenn, after getting fired, hooked up with Northern Colorado. And all he did was build that program into national prominence and won two national championships there. And guess what? They invited him back. Humphrey, it's deflected or fumbled, and it rolls out of bounds. And out of the hands of Spencer Frederick. Hey, you're talking about the spread <laughs> offense. We have seen that have a huge impact in college football, not that just at the 1AA level, but certainly in 1A as well. You're seeing teams like Northwestern pick up the spread offense, use it to run the football, put points up on the board. Oklahoma. It's Oklahoma. The, the spread offense, which uh, has been running Division I AA for a long time, is being used a lot in 1A now. Well, this stuff used to be revolutionary. Now it's kind of not mundane, but every day. The throw is caught on the sidelines by T.J. Oakers. That's the best ball that John Edwards has thrown today. Well, and it's a big play. I mean, they needed something to get a chunk of yardage. And this is the most comfortable he's looked in the pocket. He didn't have anybody on him, kept him off his back, had a chance to drop it in there to Elkers. And, Rod, we both commented going into the half that Montana was fortunate that this wasn't a blowout and they could lose this game early in the third quarter. But the Grizz have come out here. They've played well defensively, and they're moving the football right now. For a third play over 15 yards for them. They need a couple more like that. Flags are down, and so is Johansi Humphrey. Gino Tutera made the stop. The senior out of Sarasota, offside, Georgia Southern. You must owe Golick money. I'm trying to stay out of his way. I don't want him upset with me. That's a 35-yard <laughs> line. First down and five. Quick throw to the sidelines, and it's caught by Ferris. And Montana continues to move the ball. It's a three-yard pickup. Second down and short. Well, a little bit more protection, you know? I mean, as you get protection, you feel more comfortable. Now watch Edwards now. There you get a good block right up the middle. He's stepping up, protecting. That's Johans Humphrey stepping up, giving him the block. That allows your quarterback to throw the ball down the field. That's good stuff. At the Georgia Southern 32-yard line. Edwards is hit on four straight now. Setting up the screen. And he paid for it. LeVar Rainey, the senior, came up from his corner spot. And that might have been the color that Humphrey saw when he was hit by Rainey. Uh, you, you know, Rich, as you watch Division I AA versus Division I-A, you say, well, what's the difference in the players? Well, the first thing that jumps out at you is usually speed. You know, it's speed and then it's size. And not so much the size of the guys who are the wide receivers, but really the linemen and the linebackers. That's where you see the difference in the levels of play. Big third down now. Montana, four of nine on third down. 
Humphrey to the 30. He's very close. Yeah, if he gets a good spot here, they'll have it. Remember, Montana will have the wind at their back when they get to the fourth quarter. Uh, the good thing for Edwards is that on this drive, he hasn't been knocked around. He's getting a little bit of confidence. And the rain has really stopped. So yeah. the ball is still rather slick, but it's better than the monsoon we had to start this third quarter. Well, you know, they really need something out of Ferris, though. And they got to get Jimmy Ferris going. He's really the emotional you know, leader of this team. When he makes plays, you know, they all get fired up. And I, I think somewhere down here, Ferris has got to come up with the ball. He's got to catch it and run with it. Or he's got to get a fade route and make a catch in the end zone. But they need him to make a play. He has done that at the end of the season and in the playoffs. Seven consecutive games over 100 yards. Five catches, 70 yards today for an average of 14 a catch. Yeah, he, he's a player. And in big games, you got to have big plays out of your big players. Tenth play of the drive. Edwards caught. Tanner Hancock in traffic. And Montana moves the sticks. They're down to the 17-yard line. And John Edwards, the young sophomore out of Billings, Montana, is getting more and more confidence on this drive. Well, the pressure's going to come now, you know. I mean, he did a nice job here against the zone defense, making sure that he finds what he needs and getting it in there. He'll deliver the ball right on time. He delivered that nicely. But here comes the pressure. And shotgun. Screen to Molden. Breaks a tackle. Molden is in the end zone. Touchdown, Montana. 17 yards for Atu Molden, the junior out of Sacramento, California. Rich, you could almost see it coming with Montana. I was right outside the locker room at halftime. They had a lot of momentum in there, yelling and screaming. Didn't feel like they were, despite the fact, trailing by 17 out of this game by any means. They have the confidence in John Edwards, as Joe Glenn told us. Short kick is taken by Georgia Southern and returned out to the 37-yard line. And now the offense of Georgia Southern, J.R. Revere, they have struggled in this second half. Rob, what's been the difference first half to second half? Well, you know, they were doing a nice job of eliminating the big plays. I mean, once they settle in doing a nice job inside on Peterson, they've continued doing that. It's the big plays they've eliminated in the second half that they gave up in the first half. Montana offense regrouping on the sideline while Georgia Southern's offense takes over. A little reverse look to Chris Johnson. Montana had it smelled out, and Johnson goes down. Yeah, that's a great play. That is a real nice play out of Justin Brennan, staying at home. You know, that's tough, too, because you got Chris Johnson coming at you with a guy who's got good feet, and you got a messed up field. You got to keep your footing. And for a defensive lineman, that's hard to do and keep your place against a guy like Johnson. That field is really messed up, Rich. Revere. Johnson makes the catch, and he fights his way for the first down. Great effort by Chris Johnson. The senior out of Americus, Georgia. That's the first first down for Georgia Southern in the third quarter. Statesboro just five hours away. Paul Johnson watching his quarterback fumble the ball. Now, remember, Georgia Southern in their first drive put it on the floor a couple of times, but did not lose it. In fact, they had a fumble that turned into a touchdown. Revere recovered it. Second and ten. Oh, remember that this Georgia Southern team was ranked number one most of the season. Montana ended the season number one after Georgia Southern stumbled late in the year. Revere, and he's close. Oh, oh, Trey Young, I got to tell you. I mean, Trey Young sitting back at that free safety spot is having an all-American game. I mean, his job has been to come make plays on the quarterback or the pitch man. He's done a neat job of it. 
And Andy Pedic was in on that stop as well. Yeah, now, now watch. You're going to see in the middle of your screen, number three. He's playing back. His job, avoid the block. He uses his speed, and then he comes up and makes the tackle. That's a great job. Young, the sophomore out of San Diego. Third down. Revere, slider, throwing. Man open, and he overthrew Derek Owens. The rain has restarted. Well, it happens every single time as a reaction. What's the reaction? Young comes up and makes a play. Immediately they decide to make him pay for it by coming back and throwing over the top. That time they weren't able to hit it. That's a good job out of Montana. Montana defense has been outstanding in the third quarter. Georgia Southern to kick. Shelton. <laughs> a wild. I thought that was a fair catch. It was. T.J. Oker signaled a fair catch, and then he was wiped out. Rod, that's going to be a 15-yard penalty. You know, sometimes you don't see it. You know, sometimes a guy signals very tentatively or very quickly, and by the time you look up down there, all you see is the guy standing there. That's what he's saying right now. And he's saying he didn't see the fair catch signal. That's a clear signal. One, one wave. But you see, if you're not looking and you miss the one wave, I don't know how he missed that one. He's about 15 yards away from him, looking right at him. He had to see that one. He had to see that guy wave his arm. LeVar Rainey, the guilty party. He's played well today. Uh, LeVar, we thought maybe you had an excuse there, foul, but uh-uh. You got to see that. Montana ball now. The Grizzlies went 79 yards on 11 plays in their last drive. They're into the win for only a minute more here. Humphrey, I'm surprised we haven't had more turnovers in these conditions. Well, and actually, we've had more turnovers out of Montana. Mm -hmm. And Montana struggled with keeping the ball. Two turnovers here. Georgia Southern has done a decent job. Adrian Peterson has been over 100 yards in every one of the games in his career, but not today. He's right now at about 77. Well, you know, one thing they don't do is they don't force the ball to him. They let the option dictate it. And so if they have to pull the ball out and not let him run it, he doesn't run it. On second and five. Hancock on a reverse. There's a flag down. Hancock is going to scamper his way into Georgia Southern Territory. I think Montana moves. They had two different counts going there. The half the line moved initially, and the other half sat there and waited and then moved a little bit later. It'll cost Montana a big gain and five yards, 33 yards on that reverse. Yeah, you know, that's a big play. I mean, that's 33 yards they don't get, and it's because you're not on the same page. You're going to see him move here. Half the team will start moving, the other half will sit still. Pretty clear cut. It'll stay second down, but it's a, a big loss for Joe Glenn's Montana Grizzlies. John Edwards, the super sub, in for the injured Drew Miller. Inside screen, they go right back to Hancock, and Hancock leaps his way out to the 34-yard line. Montana down 20 to three, scored on their last possession, faced with third and short. John Edwards. Throwing on the run, it's tipped and incomplete. And Montana will be forced to punt. John Edwards in the second half, now 11 of 15. Yeah, and before that last incompletion, he had completed eight in a row. Starting to feel really confident, and he's also got the wind at his back now. So I think in the fourth quarter, you might see him wing it a little bit more. Montana, in that pivotal third quarter wind-wise, Boy, for them to come out and get a touchdown and not give up any points yeah. when they did not have the win. Whoa, hey. it's a fake. Montana's faked it, and they'll pick up the first down. And more. John Fox.
Fitzgerald. He'll score! 65 yards! I don't believe it! Hunchberger. And Rich, it was botched at the beginning. The fake was botched, but Hunchberger saved it. Hunchberger, the strong safety on a fake punt, goes length to the field. Montana misses another extra point. Are you kidding me? Are you Money serious? to 15. You make the fake punt, but you blow the PAT. And they almost blew this. Watch the snap. Huntsberger's right there. Look at it. It's on the ground. It's on the ground, and Georgia Southern doesn't recognize it. Good job out of him. He hustles, but he doesn't rush himself, picks it up, and then it's just off to the races. But the ball was on the ground for Vince Huntsberger. You know, good fake here, but the ball is now on the ground, Rich, and Huntsberger is the only one who knows it. I mean, the field helps him there. He doesn't have blazing speed, but he certainly uses what he has to get by the Georgia Southern special team. Montana special teams have been terrible all year long. They've had four kickoffs. Two punt returns taken back for touchdowns. Three kicks blocked. And here in the championship game, they take a faked, muffed punt. You know, I, I think touchdown. Yeah, I think it's clear now to Montana that they can give up on the PAT. They got to go for two from here on out because they just can't make any kicks. Chris Snyder has missed a couple of extra points. And Montana with a good hit on Weathers on the return. Is this how they drew it up? You know, when they drew it up, it was supposed to be clean. Here's your up guy right there. Here's your guy who's going to fake. Now watch, the ball's going to go to the ground. Ah, yeah, there it is. But you know, great block in the huge hole. He had a huge lane. He could go anywhere he wanted to go. But the ball was dropped. But he had to make up for it. He did a nice job fielding it, much like a shortstop with a short hop, getting it up and getting it going. And Peterson with the carry to the 26-yard line. Well, guys, we've been trying to explain the lack of really big numbers and output offensively for Adrian Peterson in this game. We found out a few moments ago he's playing with a twisted ankle that is re-aggravated. That was an injury prior to the this championship game during the regular season, plus the hyperextended left elbow. He's not close to 100% out there, guys. Yeah, but you're not going to get him out of that ball game, Dave. Revere. It's loose! Montana's got it! Can Revere get it back? Montana's got it! Oh, wow! <laughs> Montana has come back time in and time out. It's been a high wire act all year long in the regular season, in the playoffs. Finally, Georgia Southern puts it on the ground, and Montana recovers. And Revere lost the ball out of his hands. A wet ball, we talked about the elements. A wet ball, he tried to pitch late, ill-advised, he loses it. Montana ball, this is Humphrey. He's down to the 11-yard line. Jason Neese made the stop. You look at the 13 wins that they've had this season. Nine times Montana won games by 10 points or less. Last week, they were dead in the water, and they held on to get to overtime to win their game. This team knows about hanging in there late in the ballgame. Paul Johnson certainly has that in mind. Georgia Southern seemingly in charge, seemingly headed to their second consecutive national championship. But Montana is back, down by five. Here comes Humphrey again. 
Yeah, Humphrey is inside the 10. And it'll bring up third down. And Rod, this brings up the point for Joe Glenn. His kicker, Chris Snyder, has been really struggling today in this weather on this turf. Well, and that's why they ran that ball there. I mean, he's thinking a couple of plays ahead, thinking I'm not worrying about kicking. I'm, we're going to get this thing. We're going to nail it. We're going to keep running it because he doesn't have confidence in his kicker right now. And he shouldn't have confidence after the blown PATs and I believe a blown field goal. So he's right to go ahead and pound it away here. Loose ball, Montana recovers. And you know what? It's fourth down now. Snyder hit a 38-yard field goal earlier today, but the field has deteriorated since. Yeah, yeah, and, and that really hurt them, you know, because they were going to run two plays to pick up the first down because they figured they'd be within a yard or so if they didn't get it on third down. This makes it tougher. Montana's going to call a timeout. Yeah, yeah, they, they don't have the confidence. They don't have the confidence in their kicking game right now. The blood is still flowing on the Georgia Southern sideline. Fourth down six for Montana. Sophomore John Edwards in for Drew Miller. Edwards on the move. He's going to keep it. Now throws it. Caught at the two. First down, Montana. Tanner Hancock. This is a great play. And they had to roll him outside, and they did a nice job of blocking the pressure on the outside. Watch him come this way. Watch the job they do right there. That's the block that got him outside. Now he can see. He's got the option, and he shot puts it out the Hancock. Boy, he sure sold the run, didn't he? Oh, absolutely. That's a great play. Now it's first and goal. Long count from Edwards. Humphrey. He is in. Montana has the lead for the first time. Yeah, he's got to be signaling for two now. You don't even think about a PAT. You got to go for two. You got no kicking game. Two puts you up by three. It's an automatic decision here. Joe Glenn, you know, that is Joe Glenn's personality right there. In a crucial moment, he can smile. He can laugh. He is one of the... One of the coaches that yeah. you really should meet in college football. Championship game, you got to smile and have some fun. Here's the two-point conversion. Edwards to the end zone. They got the two points. Humphrey the catch. Montana has a three-point lead. Stunning developments here in Chattanooga. The juggernaut that is Georgia Southern had a 20-3 lead. And believe me, it could have easily been 40-3. But Montana's defense shut them down in the third quarter. Montana got six points and 14 quick points here in the fourth. Montana has their first lead of the ball game. And up the sideline for Georgia Southern goes Tom LaRocco. And we go down to Dave Ryan. All right, Rich, we're joined by Montana injured quarterback Drew Miller. First of all, how's the name? I popped my MCL pretty good. Uh, you know, I have to wait, wait uh, for the swelling to go down to see what else uh, is going on in there. Pretty dramatic on the sideline watching this Grizzly comeback. What are you and John Edwards talking about down here? Uh, you know, he just needs to stay poised and uh, keep doing what he's doing. He's doing a great job. Uh, the defense has given us some things. He just needs to take advantage of it. You think you can make this big comeback on these guys? Uh, we've been doing it all year, and uh, we talked about jailing together at halftime. And, uh, you know, we'll be all right. We're going to give him we're gonna give everything we got. Get better soon. Adrian Peterson, touchdown, Georgia Southern. Oh, man, 57 yards. Wow, Adrian Peterson. Don't forget, Georgia Southern is the defending national champion. Need you know anything more about Adrian Peterson? Need you know anything more? He's got the bad ankle, the bad elbow, mom and dad watching, and he has to come with it. And what's he do? He responds with a 57-yard touchdown run. And how in the world he saw the opening to the outside, I don't know, but he found it. Last year on his 58-yard run, he broke about eight tackles. The extra point is up and just barely good. On this one, it was his speed. Oh, the speed and the vision. Down 23 20s, and uh uh, they ain't going out like that. Gotta have a championship. Mom and dad said, 
I told you they weren't done yet. And this one is far from being done. Well, watch the vision. I mean, he's going to break inside, but watch him find the vision to the outside the lane. He knows. He feels it. Watch him right now. He's got a guy out there, but he feels it, and he gets outside. That key cut made it a touchdown. That's the difference between a 30-yard pickup and a 57-yard touchdown run. Last year against Youngstown State, you saw the speed on this one. Watch the strength on this run. Oh, yeah. Well, he's got the whole package. He gives you some speed, but then when he's got to show you the power and the moves, he's got it. Right now, you can't ride me. Get off me. I'm on my way out of the house. One more guy show up. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Get out of here. <laughs> Adrian Peterson delivering the blows, delivering the touchdown in this fourth quarter. And what a fourth quarter it's been. We've played barely three minutes. And there's been 21 points scored in it. Yeah, but you know, I got to tell you, when we heard about the ankle and the elbow and the brace, we both knew he would not come out of the ball game. Short kick. It's Molden who had the touchdown catch. And Achi Molden is still alive, and he's out to the 41 yard line. What's up? Rich, you know What's up, baby? Vision, you know love about love his speed. Love the man so brings some power as well. He's an inside runner here. Watch him find it. He gets knocked around by Pedic, but that doesn't stop him. He keeps his balance. And remember, it is a bad field, bad footing. But this man keeps it and takes it all the way. Look how chewed up that field is. There's no way you're supposed to keep your balance when you get knocked around by two guys inside like that. But he keeps his balance, makes the great cut, and carries it to the house. And Montana will try to answer serve at their own 41. Edwards complete over the middle. Ferris with the catch. And he fights his way out to the 49-yard line. First quarter, nada. Second quarter, 68 yards. Montana put the clamps on, and the big run has started him off well here in the fourth quarter. Well, when you need him, Call on him. He's there. Second down, two. Humphrey into Georgia Southern Territory. This wild fourth quarter sequence, as Paul Johnson faces the sideline, was all put in motion when Montana tried a fake punt, fumbled it, picked it up. And Vince Hunsberger, a safety, raced length of the field for a touchdown. He went 65 yards. Montana came back, forced a turnover, stuck it in the end zone, and then Peterson answered with a 57-yard jump. And suddenly, in the blink of an eye, it is 27-23. Edwards throws his chip, an incomplete second down and 10. Well, Edwards has throwing lanes. He's facing a two deep coverage, two safeties splitting the deep part of the field and then five guys underneath. Now, when they spread their receivers out, they are finding holes in the zone. He just needs to have the ability to get the ball over the defensive line. He's got receivers open. Second and 10. At the Georgia Southern. 46. Quick screen, Ferris. Got some blockers. Outside, out of bounds, first down, Montana. Well, you like the way that they're moving right now, but it's important to have some patience, some composure. You know, Humphrey's been big for them. They got to keep using him. You know, go ahead and run the ball some in here. Don't put it all on Edwards' shoulders right now. Humphrey has been your guy. He's gotten you this far. Allow him to help you now. Run him, toss it to him, throw it to him, but take some of the pressure off of Edwards. On first and 10, Edwards going to go deep, man open, can't get it, Ferris was open and Edwards just overthrew him. Uh, again, the two deep coverage. They have places open. But again, you are asking your guy to be a pinpoint passer under tough situations. Here we go. There it is. There's a two deep. There's a two deep. Here's a guy. He's just going to go deep. 
The safety doesn't get over. There's plenty of room to make that play. Safety doesn't come over because he's concerned about the inside. That play was there. Second down and 10. Humphrey to the 32. The rain is starting again. Rich, the rain will be a factor, but again, it does help you when you're passing. You can't, the, the field is chewed up. You can't get good traction when you're pass rushing. Edwards should have time to throw it. They should have time on screens. Third down, I think you have to think two plays here. You don't need the first down on this one. You're not going to kick. Think two plays to get the first down. 5 of 12 on third down today. On third and eight, Edwards, a short throw. Molden caught it. Joe Glenn had the same play called that you were looking for, Rod, because they pick up about five or six, and they're faced with a fourth down and about two or three. Uh, that's the right thing to do. And I mean, now you got a chance on fourth down. I mean, if you try and get it down the field on third down and you miss it, you leave yourself with a third and long. And now you've got some choices. You can run your screen. You can roll your quarterback out if you want to, or you can put them in there too deep and spread them out and hit your guy inside. They've got a lot of options right now. Fourth down, three. Edwards. Incomplete, he overthrew Tanner Hancock. And Montana gives it up on downs. Well, of all the options, that, that's not the one I liked, <laughs> you know? And you need three yards. You got plenty of chances to get it short. You, you, don't, you don't need 15 there. Paul Johnson has a chance to get his offense back on the field. Adrian Peterson went 57 yards the last time he touched the ball. Want to bet he touches it here? Uh, I, I suspect that you're not going to see Revere pitch it. Peterson straight ahead. Montana stops him. Adam Boomer made the stop. Let's check in with Dave Ryan. Well, guys, we know Georgia Southern is happy to have that defensive stand and stop the Montana offense, but I'm telling you, watching these guys on the Georgia Southern sideline, they are gasped. Freddie Pescata just came off the field almost stumbling his way to the sideline. He is so tired. They are exhausted right now and need a nice Georgia Southern offensive drive here. Triple o'clock and give them a break. They are really tired. Right. Georgia Southern will play for the first down. The big guys looking like they've been out there. Second down. Revere still has it. Now he'll pitch. It's dropped again. Montana's got it again. A rich. That's the second consecutive pitch that's resulted in a turnover. Why they're pitching the ball under these circumstances, I don't know. I mean, we talked about this just a minute ago. Revere would not pitch it. Why? That. You don't want to do that. You want to give it to Adrian Peterson. And this is a very late pitch. Now, 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 don't pitch it. You got a lead, and you're too close. That's a high pitch. Weathers is too close to him, and Boomer makes the recovery. That's a bad job. Huntsberger forced the pitch. Adam Boomer fell on it, and Montana is right back in business. Bad decision. You just you cannot pitch that ball under these circumstances. And John Edwards is back to work. Edwards got a lot of green in front of him. He'll tuck it and run. And he pays the price. The tired defense out there, as Dave Ryan told us a moment ago. Very tired. The reverse to Molden. He's going to throw it into the end zone. Ferris can't get there, and it's incomplete. On second down and in inches, Montana gambles. Yeah, this is a trick play they probably saved just for this type of situation. Here's Molden. He's going to be the guy that comes around. And all it is is trying to get a guy down deep. But it's Molden that is the key guy here. Watch him here. You want him throwing the ball. He's got his guy out there. But not enough. Third down short. Movement and flags and whistles. Montana says it's against Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern says it's against Montana. I thought Georgia Southern jumped. Fleming Williams and his crew, I think, have done a nice job in this game. Excellent job. 
you talk about the conditions for the players. It's not an easy game to play in, and these conditions are tough for officials as well. They've done a tremendous job being on top of things. <laughs> Just fighting the ball is an issue. Georgia Southern, the favorite in this game, though the fourth seed, while Montana, the one seed. And boy, did Georgia Southern look like the favorite in the first half. And the footing is particularly bad down here, Rich. Both of these men have won national championships. Edwards. Quick throw and a catch by John Fitzgerald, the tight end, and he's out of bounds. To the 12-yard line, eight yards on the pickup. Well, they're doing the right things with Edwards. I mean, they're, they're, they're moving him around, getting him away from pressure, having him throw the shorter passes. The shorter passes have worked. It's the passes downfield that have been a problem for them. This is probably Yo Humphrey's time. Flags hit the turf before Humphrey can start his run. Two national championships for the man on the right at the Division II level with Northern Colorado. The man on the left, Paul Johnson, a national championship last year. That'll cost Montana five yards. But you know something, Rich? I, I don't think it changes your play selection right now. I mean, that still gives you about a second and six, a second and seven, and you're in four down territory. Georgia Southern is tired. Your offensive line can pound them. I think you go ahead and go at them again with Humphrey. Edwards, end zone. Intercepted. Intercepted by Ryan Haddon. It's no down territory now. Well, they're set. they will second guess themselves about that. You got a tired defense out there. You're moving the ball. Go ahead and get it. Here he is in the middle. And again, the passes down the middle, the deep passes have been a problem. They're facing a two deep once again. He's trying to squeeze it inside. And there he is. Haddon gets in there. And again, you've got a backup quarterback, and you're asking him to win the game for you when your offensive line and your running back have really, really been great. Peterson carries it to the 30, or rather to the 25-yard line. Now, Georgia Southern twice in this option offense have put it on the ground and lost it in the second half. I think there's a pretty good chance that they've told Revere, do not pitch the ball under any circumstances. Injured player will stop the clock. John Edwards, <laughs> who's had to play in the place of Drew Miller, who was knocked out of this game early. Peterson straight ahead, stood up, stops. Short of the first down, it'll be third down and two. Tyler Martin, the senior out of Olympia, Washington, made the stop. Now, I know that there's a chance that Revere will keep the ball on the option and run it himself, but I see no reason to do anything other than get it to Adrian Peterson. I mean, you know he's going to take care of the football. He might bust one for you. He may get you the first down. But at least you have the security of knowing that Adrian Peterson can take care of the football. Third and three. Has he played some football today or what? He's got pad marks, helmet marks, all over his jersey. 144 yards and 22 carries. Timeout. Georgia Southern. Now the Eagles faced with third down and three. Movement and flags well before the snap, and Revere was just settling in behind center. Now they're pointing at Georgia Southern. Well, the one official has procedure. And you're right, Rod. Now, how about this, though? You can't have a clean jersey, a clean uniform on a day like this. I mean, if you have a clean jersey, you don't get any refreshments. You get no water on the sideline. And here's one guy who's a little bit clean, but he's dirty on the backside. Everybody's got to be dirty when you're playing a game like this. That's Bubba Brantley who has come in for James McCoy. Now another look at a third down situation. And they stick with Peterson. 
Georgia Southern wanted a face mask. You saw the official indicating there was no grab of the mask. He was motioning towards his neck. Well, there's Brantley. You know, when you're out there side, you say, okay, wait a minute. I'm not going back to the sideline with a clean uniform. Find me some dirt. There we go. I got it now. Hey, we flip around, get some on the backside. Now I've played. Now I can go to the sideline and make sure. I got something going. It feels like one of the gang now. Absolutely. Big punt coming up. Scott Shelton into the wind, and it hangs up. Fair catch is called for, and that was almost a violation of the two-yard cushion, but Oker's made the fair catch. Almost 18,000 on hand here in Chattanooga in the rain. Edwards to the air. Got his man. It's caught right at midfield. Ferris, who had the wind knocked out of him in the first half, holds on. Michael Youngblood made the stop. And Rich, we noticed that Nate Gates is in the ball game for Georgia Southern. They're fine quarterback number one who's missed so many games with a bad, bad knee is finally in this ball game. Sports Center coming up immediately following. There's a look at Gates. Yeah, he's just into the ball game. On first and ten, Edwards swings it out. And it's caught by Humphrey. There goes Humphrey, head over heels. Into Georgia Southern Territory. Inside the 30, it's a 16-yard pickup. And Lamar no Rainey to, made the stop. Yeah, no need to rush. Got plenty of time here. Nice job. Again, we talked about Humphrey being the guy. He's had a huge game. Go ahead and let work him. Give him the ball. Hand it to him. Throw it to him. And he makes them pay. He beats the linebacker here. Picks up 16. From the 30, here's Humphrey, right side. Nothing doing. Georgia Southern with a nice stop. What's up on the sideline, Dave Ryan? Well, Richard, a moment ago, you alluded to the fact that the Montana fans have brought a really large contingent despite the long trip. And these folks have not stopped making noise, even with a 23 deficit at the half. Their theme is, we still believe. I think they can take this championship, and I can tell from just being here on the Montana sideline, the players are feeding off that. A lot of positive energy coming from the fans to the Grizz players. They've had some amazing comebacks this year. This would rank at the very top, obviously. Blitz coming, Edwards gets rid of it. Ferris on a screen, has a block, and a lane. Inside the 20, first down, Montana, three and a half minutes left. Yeah, and no change in the coverage. They're seeing the same two deep I showed you earlier, and Ferris reads it. He understands where the guys are, and they go right to him. He knows to the outside is where it is. So Ferris comes in, now you've got your screen set up. He's got good blocking from his linemen, and then he knows he's got to get back outside. That's a good job. Understanding where the pressure is, where the coverage is, Ferris makes a nice play. Humphrey bounces outside to the 15. It's a gain of three. Montana seems so far from this ball game as we started the second half. And now they're 15 yards from the end zone and a possible national championship. Well, and there are two guys who've been making plays for them. Humphrey and Ferris. Humphrey is a guy that you have to believe they will count on down here. He gets it on the draw and Humphrey straight ahead to the 12. Third down. Clock continues to melt. Two timeouts for Montana. Two timeouts for Georgia Southern. Uh, if you're Joe Glenn on the sideline, you're thinking, OK, I got a couple plays to get me a championship. Who do I count on? Where do I go? We got two plays to pick up a first down, maybe a touchdown. I'm believing in my line. I'm believing in Humphrey. Third down. Edwards inside screen. Caught by Hancock, but he's in trouble. And he's dropped. He'll lose two yards. And Montana needs to stop the clock. Yes. Yep, long way to go. Fourth and a very long six. Ferris in motion. Edwards with time. Throws. Drop. Incomplete. Georgia Southern holds with 1.15 left. Joe Scott with a hit. 
Here's Ferris right before the play. He's trying to get the timeout. He doesn't like what he has, but he can't get it stopped. He can't get it, and so now he's got to run the route. Not enough. Not enough. Ball thrown behind him. Joe Scott with the hit. He couldn't get the timeout. I go back to that third down call, which I didn't like, because I think you go to your key players to win the game. They had two. They went away from them. They lost two yards. It made their fourth down play tougher. There's a look at Ferris. Georgia Southern keeps it on the ground. Montana burns the timeout. They have one left. Russell revived football. The former defensive coordinator at Georgia. Built this program. Won four national titles. Johnson is seconds away from his second. Revere carries it to the 12, and Montana calls a timeout. Yeah, and that ball was glued to his hand. There was no way. That Revere was going to pitch that ball after having pitched it twice in the fourth quarter and caused turnovers. Ken Simonton, Oregon State. Okay. All right. Georgia Southern keeps it on the ground. Like, whoa, he almost ran out of bounds. Revere's got to stay in, and he does. And let's watch the clock. The play clock will be reset when they're ready for play, and they reset the ball. Montana can't stop the clock. Georgia Southern now on fourth down is going to have to kick the ball well the first thing you do is you let the clock run and you, you try and get the time down as far as you can and then you kick it they may burn a timeout right at the end of it so they don't have to take the penalty there's the play clock but you definitely run all the time off this thing And let's see what happens here. Scott Shelton, the punter. It's a snap. He's going to take the safety and step out of the end zone. If Montana gets a decent return here, the clock stops at the end of the return, and Montana will have a chance to get their offense on the field. Yeah, you kick a line drive kick that's difficult to field. But I think you want to kick it deep, Rod. I don't think you want to kick it short. Fifteen seconds left. Rob Baronis will do the kickoff. Not too deep and not too short. Trying to get outside is Hancock, and he gets out of bounds right at midfield. Montana has 11 seconds left. If they complete a pass, it's got to be for a first down or by the sidelines. Well, they can take their chances and throw the ball down the middle. I mean, they can throw it down the middle, get the first down, and then hurry to the line of scrimmage. There's enough time for that if they immediately get down the field and then down the ball again. And they're going to be facing a very soft two-deep or three-deep zone coverage now. Edwards, no timeouts left. Close to the sidelines. It's deflected and incomplete. And there's five seconds left. Yeah, great job by LeVar Rainey. That's that's using your head. And he knows they got to go to the sideline. He knows they got to go about 15 yards. So what's he do? He sits on the outside portion of the field at 15 yards and waits for them to throw the ball right there. That's smart play. Five seconds left. Georgia Southern by two. No timeouts for Montana. John Edwards is back and set. He throws it as far as he can. And it's deflected and incomplete. And Georgia Southern has won the national championship of 1AA football. Back-to-back -back titles for Paul Johnson and his Eagles.